the the authenticity is like I mean, it's foundational. And going back to, you know, where we kind of started this conversation with just understanding our past and, and bringing that like authentic experience to our consciousness, Mm -hmm. um, you know, understanding the authentic nature of our children, you know, responding in a way that's not like with a script, but that is coming from like within. Hey mama, welcome to the Balanced Mom Method Podcast, a safe space to help you transform the way that you approach motherhood and life. If you're a mom struggling with self-worth, overwhelmed with overstimulation, looking to slow down, conquer mom guilt, let go of external pressures, or even embark on a spiritual awakening, you are in the right place. Let's break free from that survival mode cycle by waking up from autopilot and authentically embracing our inner self-love, trust, and connection. Imagine if every single part of your life was perceived through a lens of expansion, value, worthiness, self-awareness, and acceptance. Hey, I'm Jenna, and I've been where you are. I was consumed in the struggles of motherhood and was always in my own head, never feeling good enough. I realized if I wanted to make a change, it started within me. And in finding that freedom, I've dedicated my life's work to helping other moms heal from the inside out to come back home to themselves too. So take my hand, mama. Let's set the foundation to live an intentional life full of peace, presence, confidence, clarity, belief, joy, love, and balance. If you are ready to weed the fluff, get to the root of cultivating real change, and feel connected to yourself on a love-rooted level, let's dive in and discover the power within you. Warm up that cold coffee, pop in your earbuds, and tighten that top knot, mama. Let's overcome together. Hello, hello, beautiful mamas, and welcome back to another episode of the Balanced Mama the Podcast. This is your host and intuitive life mentor, Jenna Smith. I am so thrilled to have a fantastic guest with us today, someone who is passionate about helping parents navigate just the challenging yet rewarding journey of parenthood, the founder of Parenting on Mars and parenting coach herself, Rachel Fritz. With a background as a former preschool teacher and having a career at National Education Nonprofit, Teach for America, Rachel has dedicated her career to empowering parents to confidently embrace their roles and parent in a way that they always dreamed that they would be a parent. She is a mom of three herself and embarked on her entrepreneurial journey with a mission to guide parents in a way that fulfills their dreams of parenting with confidence, pride, and success. Like, amen to that. Can't we all just feel the peace and the confidence in being a parent? So let's dive into this conversation to uncover some secrets to parenting with peace and connection and authenticity, confidence, success, and all those feels that we long for. Rachel, welcome to the show. I want to pass over the mic to you just to share a bit about why and how you started Parenting on Mars. Hi, Jenna. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited um, to be here. I Yeah. So you shared an amazing intro. Thank you for that. You know, I had a, um, after being in in the classroom um, as a preschool teacher for a couple of years, um, I joined Teach for America and had about a decade long career there. And, you know, throughout that time, I welcomed my three kids and, you know, went through just the various challenges of, you know, having your first child. I I, um, battled postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety, welcomed a second child and then a third. And at some point, um, I started to really take a step back and look at, you know, what, what do I really enjoy doing? What do I feel that I'm really good at? And honestly, parenting was that answer. (laughs) Um, I'm a parent parenting, parenthood enthusiast. Um, It doesn't mean it's not hard for me to, but Um, I just, I I really just believe so much in the power of our relationships with our children and decided last year to support families and parents on their journey to become just the, the best parent they could be and really embody the type of parenting that they, they dreamed that they would embody when they became, when they became parents themselves. And talking prior to recording just through email and just not right now, I, I just love like the words that, that you have within your business, like consciousness, intentionality, responsiveness, like 
that, those are like the words that like I just want to embody like within life too. So I'm I'm so excited to to jump in to just our conversation because I really feel that we we share a lot of the same values and just in that sense of being intentional and what you said like embody the parent that you that you dreamt to be right because being that first time parent like it's not easy like I don't care what you, what you thought it was right and now it's like whoa, like here we are. And then, I mean, sometimes we feel like we're stumbling forward if, if even forward. Right. So talk to me a little bit about, we chatted a little bit before the recording and you mentioned just kind of how it, it's difficult to show up for your kids in the way that you want to without using conscious intention. What do you mean by that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we are, are complex human creatures. Um, and our reality and the way that we interact with the world has been formed over just many, many years of being on being on this earth, being in relationships with others, but in particular, being in relationship with our own caregivers. Mm -hmm. And so it's really tough as we look at our parenting, it's really tough to um, make sense of it and kind of dissect it without looking back at how we ourselves were parented mm -hmm. um, and what what comes up for us when we have moments with our children that you know cause reaction or um, we can also use the word that you know that trigger us in some way because a lot of those a lot of those triggers and a lot of that reaction it's not it's not intentional it's not conscious. It's stored in our body. It's stored in our body's memory. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's often, you know, a reflection of what our experience with, you know, maybe a particular behavior was like when we were children. So, you know, what happens when your, you know, three, four, five, eight year old says no to you mm -hmm. and that, that brings up a feeling that brings up a reaction. What I guide clients to sort of dig into is what happened if you said no in your household and what was, you know, what was the reaction there? Um, let's go back to, you know, kind of being in the moment for yourself. What did you need in that moment? What mm -hmm. would have been helpful in that moment? And so making the connection um, and, and bringing more awareness to our own story so that we can show up in the way we intend to. That's so beautiful because, I mean, that's a lot of the work that I do like with moms, right? Like getting to that inner root work because a lot of times we just so just unconsciously respond because of what we're just conditioned, you know, as we were growing up or fr from childhood or just from past experiences. So that is, I love that, I guess, practice that you use to like think back when you were that age, even, you know, what would you need? What would have helped in that situation? That's so beautiful. Yeah, thanks. And, you know, and I, I think too, you know, making sense of our past story and making sense of our kind of own childhood narrative, essentially, it doesn't mean, I think for some folks, it can, it can be a really tender practice because it might feel like, oh, do I have to condemn my childhood? Like, I love my parents. Like, I think, I think fondly of my childhood. Mm -hmm. Um, Do I have to paint it as, as bad or problematic? And the answer is no, not at all. You know, we can hold multiple feelings at once. Multiple things can be true at once. And so when we start to kind of you know, really craft that what um, attachment theorists call uh, a coherent narrative, right? So when we really start to craft that narrative, we're able to look at what was, what traditions, what values, what practices really served us well that we want to continue in our family and ultimately our family's lineage. And then what aspects we want to uproot and, it, and you know, explore and tweak because, you know, we're, we're where our lineage is today and the choices that we make in our parenting are not just going to impact our own children, but impact generations mm -hmm. to come. Yeah. So let's jump into a little bit about like being reactive, right. Mm -hmm. Versus like taking that stepping back, like being aware or responsive in parenting. So kind of what are your beliefs with like reactivity versus responsiveness? Uh, reactivity is that you know, unsurprisingly, it's, it's that knee jerk reaction. It's, mm -hmm. it's what has, it, it's sort of this like mind body, I would say, you know, connection that's happening where 
when I, when I feel reactive, I, I have certain sensations in my body. I have certain, you know, maybe mindsets or stories going on in my mind. And I start to become disconnected from my ability to really um, step back, ask questions, get curious, um, you know, make sense of the moment as being something that is not personal, that is not essentially like definitive of who my child is as a person. And so when we can bring more awareness to the way that our brain works, right? And the way that our body and brain are connected to each other and start to really integrate those and and practice that integration our response, our, our response or our reaction to our children will stop being so reactive and will be more responsive. I love the work of Dr. Dan Siegel. He's written, you know, a lot of books on, on mindsight and sort of, you know, just the way that the, the brain works in helping our children stay regulated and ourselves be regulated and co-regulation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's when that those reactive moments happen our, our, our prefrontal cortex, you know, the part of our brain that's responsible for reasoning and planning and, you know, higher order thinking, it goes offline. Um, And so we have to practice bringing it back online and reintegrating it to our, to other parts of our brain, other parts of our body, so that we can, um, so that we can move forward intentionally. And that's, I mean, that's ultimately the type of practice and support I give to my clients when they work with me is, is, you know, doing that over, over several weeks, and then really shifting the way that you show up in moments, it, it feels different in your body, when you are, when you're able to practice this with the support of, of another person. Oh, for sure. And this is kind of taking a little tangent here. But when you said prefrontal cortex, isn't that when little ones, you know, when they have a tantrum, or when they're lashing out, isn't that the same concept, right? Like they, they haven't developed that piece of their prefrontal cortex yet. Right. So it's like getting them to calm down too. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and, and to your point, it's not developed, you know, fully, it won't be developed until they're in their mid twenties, unfortunately (laughs) um, for all of us. But what we as parents are responsible for um, in helping our children learn and grow and, and helping their brain, um, you know, get that, you know, really the make the connections that are going to impact them for the rest of their lives. Our job is to teach them and and use discipline. And I think of discipline as teaching, right? Not as, as punishment, but teach them when their mind and their body is in a regulated state so that there's access to that front part of their brain and we can start you know, almost like, it's almost like working out, starting to build that muscle, right? Mm -hmm. Because the change and the, and the consistency is going to come when we're doing it over and over and over again. This is why, like, I am just not a fan of parenting, like hacks, tips, tricks, scripts, like a script isn't going to, while it might be helpful for you in a moment in terms of how you respond, it's not going to like, it's, it's not nourishing your kid's brain in the way that like your connected presence and co-regulation will. hundred percent. Right. Totally. So, okay. Reeling it back in here with like the, the reactivity versus responsiveness. Thank you though, because I've, I've heard that and it makes sense because you said it, like you just hit the nail on the head. It is our job to be those teachers because they don't know better yet. Like literally, like it hasn't, you know, been developed. So, Okay. So how can we build kind of that awareness? Like, do you have any tips or strategies how to build that awareness to respond thoughtfully, intentionally, rather than impulsively? Yeah. Um, so the work that I, I, I would say two things that I think all parents would really serve parents well um, in terms of getting familiar with, getting familiar with how your brain works. You don't have to be, you know, a, a brain surgeon (laughs) or, you know, or go to med school to know this. This is, this is like who we are as humans. This type of information is accessible and should be accessible to all of us. Mm -hmm. Um, And so getting to know 
how your brain works, right? Just a little bit of what we talked about, sort of, you know, the different centers, you know, the lower brain being responsible for, you know, our our survival, our breathing, our, you know, our fight, our flight, um, you know, reactive, um, you know, reactivity in moments of stress, our, li- our limbic system and, and where, um, where, how that plays a part in like our emotions and then our, our, our thinking brain, right? The higher parts of our brain that are responsible for that higher order thinking, understanding like that, that's how you're made. That's how you're built. Mm-hmm. Get, getting a bit familiar with that and then also getting familiar with the nervous system. So uh, polyvagal theory is something that I also do a lot, teach a lot in my coaching and, you know, walk folks through, but understanding when you are in a very mobilized state, when you are, and, and mobilization isn't a bad thing, right? Like I, when I say mobilized, I mean, you know, sometimes it's being um, reactive. Sometimes it's it's getting through a to do list. Sometimes it's you know getting your kids out the door. You're mobilized. You're active, but you're not in this like social engagement zone, right? So understanding like how am I feeling? Where am I? Like am I am I in a calm, relaxed, you know, regulated sort of social engagement like area of of my nervous system? And if that, am I really um, reactive and heightened? Am I, am I in a shutdown state? Am I just giving up? Like, is my kid, you know, having a tantrum in the middle of the floor and I'm just done and I'm walking away, Mm -hmm. right? Versus I'm, you know, I'm, I'm mobilized or I'm in social engagement and I can, I can be present with them in that reactive moment. So, you know, I think that really it it comes down to a lot of awareness of self and awareness of how we, you know, operate as humans. And once you once you start to understand that and make sense of it, you can harness it and mold it and sort of have more control over it. Mm-hmm, totally, because it's taking ownership of ourselves, yeah. right? Like it's taking, it's almost, I've, I've heard this and it might be like a buzz term, but like heard this of where like, you're almost reparenting yourself in different capacities right. when you're parenting your kids, because like that term or like when someone says like, they should know better. I'm like, but, but, but he's four, like, you know, <laughs> like it's where, where's that example? Like, am I, you know, am I setting that example? So it's like taking that ownership ourselves of like modeling that healthy emotional expression ourselves, yeah. you know, versus yelling or, yeah. or things like that. So that's, yeah, it's, it's such a delicate dance. Oh my yeah. God. And I love that example of like, they should know better because it, it's, there's a difference between knowing and then being able to access that knowing in a stressful moment. Oh, right. Wow. So like, mm-hmm. I, like my five-year-old knows that he's not supposed to throw magnetiles across the room. Right. And, and if we're, you know, having breakfast and I'm like, Hey pal, like, you know, how should we play with magnetiles? Like what, what's it, you know, what are some good ideas? Like what's not some good ideas for that? No. He can tell me he knows. Right. But when his body is flooded with stress and um, you know, or anxiety or anger and a magnetile is next to him, he's going to pick it up and he's going to throw it. Yeah. And it's my job as a parent to know that, that's not coming from his thinking brain. That's not coming from his knowing brain. That's coming from lower centers of the brain. And I'm he- I'm here to intervene, to co-regulate, to give him to be a calm, sturdy presence mm-hmm. and to help him. And when I do that, this is what's happening, right? When I do that, his, his nervous system is able to come back down mm-hmm. to a state of calm right to social engagement faster and it's practicing that over and over and over in the presence of an adult and when that when that continues to get practice what's going to happen is slowly it's not doesn't happen overnight he's going to have stress or anger or reaction a magnetile is going to be next to him and he's not going to throw it Mm -hmm. because he's practiced it with you right so, okay. Can we dive into a little bit of like how, like how in like yeah. the whole regulation, like when you're there, he's in a moment or he or she is in a moment and you're there being that sturdy safety yeah. for them. Yeah. Do you work on breathing? Do you talk through it? I know this is very child to child basis too. Yeah. But 
just kind of giving some strategies of like how to help them come back down. Yes, absolutely. Um, you're right. It's so, it's so child specific. And this is, you know, where I tell parents, like I can, I can coach parents and help parents without knowing their child Mm -hmm. because they know their child, right? Like, you know, I'm here to, to, to be parent centric in my coaching. And so what, so when you consider, you know, your child's unique self, um, what I do, so here's some things that I do. If I know I'm, I'm attuned to like what's going on in my house, right? Like I have to be, I'm the parent, like I'm, I, I know where I can hear when things are, are escalating, right? I've identified it though. I've identified those patterns. So if I hear that, I make myself just physically present. I'm not yelling from the other room. Sometimes I'm yelling from the other room as I'm like running yeah. like, don't hurt each other. Yeah. <laughs> right. But like, that's not the strategy. Um, I, I get physically present. I get on their level. Mm-hmm. And the, the very first thing is just like, keep everyone safe right? Like whatever you got to do, you block the magnetile, you, you know, you, you ask, you know, other children involved perhaps to like move their body. Um, Mm -hmm. you, you maybe bring one child into another room, but you get physically present and you essentially, you're like, you're, you're, you're waiting out this storm a Mm -hmm. bit with your calm presence, right? So like maybe you're breathing, Maybe, you know, you're taking deep breaths. Maybe it helps your child to hear like, this is really hard or, oh, you didn't want that to happen. Like, those are the, those are the scripts that I often say, like, you know, quote, I'm not a fan of, but again, you know, your child, like Mm -hmm. it, are those words going to be calming and soothing? Like you tell me sort of, right. Um, One of my kids loves to be held when they're really upset. Another one of my kids is like, do not touch me. And I, and I, and I don't, right. Like that, for whatever reason, that like physical touch is like adds to the reactivity in the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm next to, you know, so the one who doesn't like to be touched, like I'm next to them, I'm physically present. And then guess what happens after a few minutes of like the rage, that one will like crawl into my lap and then, and you know, and then I'm waiting and we're soothing and I'm, you know, maybe like you know, petting his hair or his head. And then, you know, we work through it, right? Like you can recast the moment. You could say, oh, let's try this again. You can, you know, give them words to use. It, it's, it's, it's modeling, it's assisting, it's teaching, but the very, the very, the very first key in all of it is just, is your connected, regulated, calm presence. And I, yeah, and I would say like, you know what that looks like and what your child needs to get to a state of where they're able to engage again and, and figure out how to move forward in that situation. Totally. I'm thinking of my son, like through these examples, because my son is the one pick me up. Like he needs a full on bear hug embrace. Yeah. And sometimes with my husband, he's like, he's four, he doesn't need to be picked up anymore. Like that type of thing. And it's like, like it's so hard. So I also know like some, I'll, I'll get down on his level and like not physically pick him up, but I'll like just embrace him in this biggest bear hug. Now my daughter, she's the younger one. She's she'll be two. I don't know yet what she's going to want. Cause she is a very like, don't touch me unless I touch you, you know? So, yeah. so I mean, it's just so fascinating. Yeah. I just listening to you. I'm just like in awe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's so, I mean, children in general, it, but just like how, the, the processes, but to me, and I, I mean, correct me, obviously you're the expert here, but like, to me, I look at it, like from my perspective, and I feel like you said this too, at the very beginning with coaching other people, like think of what would you want in this position, mm-hmm. you know, put yourself in, in those shoes, maybe not necessarily like back when you're four years old, but think of what would you need in this hard position right now? You yeah. know, yelling isn't the answer, you yeah. know, <laughs> like being sent up alone to your room. Like it's, it's hard. Like there's moments, trust me, like we have our moments, but right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have one more question. I have, I have a couple more questions. So from your perspective as a parenting coach now, like what, and I, I know that you've touched on this, but kind of just to bring this full circle, what strategies practices do you recommend for instilling that ongoing resilience and the self-confidence that I feel like that's a big one. Cause I feel like when my son, like when the discipline is happening or like when, you know, we're, we're working on like not yelling, not raising our voice, but again, it, it happens. And when he knows he's done something, 
I feel like his self-confidence like dips. So how do you kind of instill that resilience and the self-confidence in children to help them futuristically, you know, navigate these life challenges? Yeah. Um, What I really, how I really love framing emotions, behaviors. uh, I mean, well, we can start with emotions because I think that, I think that that sort of, you know, bleeds into other areas, but is to think about like our, our feelings as visitors, right. Or that they're not who we are. So even the, even the phrase, like, are, like, are you sad versus do you feel sad is different. Like I, and you know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of being like, you know, you can't say no, or you can't like, don't, don't say it this way, or don't say you like their painting, only say you like the process. Like there are too many rules that like stress parents out. And so like, if you ask your child, like, are you sad? It's not the end of the world, but the, the intention that I'm, that I'm getting at here is teaching our children that the feelings and the sensations that, you know, happen to us aren't us. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, are not sadness. We are not frustration. We are not anger. Those are, those are, those are emotions and feelings. They're visitors that come to visit. They serve a really important need. They're Mm -hmm. not bad. They can stay for a while. They're, they're kind of here to help, Mm -hmm. right? Like if you didn't have those feelings and you were navigating the world, like without having like fear, anger, frustration, jealousy, sadness, like you'd probably be in danger. So these are helpers and they're visitors. Um, And we can say hi to them and we can sit with them. Sometimes, you know, when we give them that attention um, and we sort of, you know, you know, think about what they're here to help us do, then, then they can leave. Then we can dismiss them. Right. Mm -hmm. My daughter once said like, she's eight. She was like, I almost feel like it's like feelings are like, it's like a hotel. It's like, they come, they stay for a little bit. And I was like, this is perfect analogy because yeah, you're right. And, and what would you do? Like if a feeling was coming like to your hotel, you would greet them, you'd sit with them for a little bit. And then you'd be like, okay, now it's time to leave Mm -hmm. because like joy is now coming. And like, uh, you know, yeah. um, or, you know, or maybe there's multiple rooms and multiple, you know, multiple feelings can live there at once. So you know, really, really teaching our kids this concept. And my, my two-year-old, he's three now, but when he was two, like, like could understand this. And even today he'll say, um, oh, sad is here. And then he'll be like, sad flew away. <laughs> right. Oh God, like, that's so precious. I know it's like the best thing, but it's really instilling. And, and I think to your question of just like resilience or like who I am, that starts to teach that lesson that like, you are not your feelings. And you're also not your behaviors, right? Mm-hmm. Like we, like you are worthy, you are good, um, and and you'll make mistakes, and and we'll make mistakes, and it's part of being human. Yeah, totally. And I'm like kind of giving ourselves kudos too, because I was like, okay, I do that. Okay, I do that. I don't identify. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, okay. But I love how you brought up like feelings, behaviors. They're visitors. That's such a good way to put it. Because sometimes like, cause I, I've always talked to my children, like, I guess as an adult, you know? So it's like, sometimes I don't know if like the concepts really get to him as they probably should. Um, so that's just a really good point of like their visitors, you know, like they'll, they'll come and go, it's normal, it's natural. But I've, yeah, been very intentional with like the, the not identifying as like, you're not a bad person, you know, like if you had a moment or whatever that might be, cause he's like, I'm such a bad boy. And I'm like, no, no. You know, he's, he's very sensitive and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, you know, I think also just like, there's some real power in, you know, in storytelling and play um, when we're teaching these things as well. So um, this is also something I do in my coaching is we talk a lot about kind of the power of play and even like the power of storytelling and not just in like a, you should play with your kids. Like we get kind of deep on the like different play languages, your own play language, your own relationship with fun and joy and play as a child, right? Back to the generational parenting stuff. But when we can, like my kids love for me to tell them just like make up stories. Um, I should just like start writing children's books because you should. I'm like, I'm so good at that. I just chills like you should. Yeah. We lay, yeah. We lay in bed at night and they'll be like, tell me a story about a frog. And then 
um, you know, find some ways to kind of relate it back to them. And just like, and as a way to kind of like build their, you know, build their confidence, you know, build their understanding of self. Um, and if it's super obvious, they'll be like, I don't want to hear this. But every now and then, it, you know, if it's a little bit subtle, you know, m- like one of like my child will be like, oh, that's me. Right. Or they'll be like, oh, I want to be that one. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a powerful tool as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Cause I love, have you ever heard of the Diggory Do books? No. He Diggory do. Oh, I can't think of if it's Michael Gordon, because I have a couple of different chi- like emotions, child books. So I don't know if Michael Gordon is that author, but he's another author. But Diggory do he's a dragon. But like there's the mindful dragon. Yes. Your dragon with anger, um, you know, negativity, not lying, kindness, like all the things. And for the most part, like I agree with a, like a lot of the concepts and they're, they're simple enough. So we're yeah. really big on like reading Dig- we, Diggory do is a big guy in our house for sure. Nice. In, oh in that same capacity of like yeah. making Absolutely. those stories. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And Jace, oh my gosh, that's so funny. I forget what, oh, we were reading the bad egg or the bad mm-hmm. seed, that, that mm-hmm. book. We were reading that last night before bed and my husband's reading the story and, and the two kids were on my lap and Jace goes, that's me. <laughs> He goes, I did that today. And Jalen's just like, well, you know, like she's yeah. not quite there yeah. yet. But it was so funny because, you know, when he was talking about like tantrums or something like that, he goes, we do that. And I was like, we all do that. So yeah. it's, it's really cool. Like what you said, like when your kids were like, oh, I was, I'm that character or, you know, yeah. like I mean, yeah, yeah. really that. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Adults well, have tantrums too. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I know. I'm like, it's just in different capacities, you know? Absolutely. I, Totally. And like, I'll talk to my husband about that. Cause I'm like, we do it. Yeah, we do it too. It's just in a completely different capacity. Right. Okay. Buzzword time. Yeah. Gentle, gentle parenting. Ah. I, I, okay, good. Because, oh, I'm yeah. Okay. So gentle parenting, there's yes. con- is conscious parenting one, or maybe sure. I, that's yes. on it. So I'm so out of the loop with like what yeah. these buzzwords are, but like, talk to me, like, what's your take on yeah. these different types of parent because you kind of yeah. like I don't like to put mold on or whatnot so talk yeah, yeah. about this <sighs> yeah gentle parenting it's like, like I'm like Bleh. Uh, I kind of I kind of hate the term and it's not because you know I think it just got away from us all mm-hmm. um it sort of became its own beast and for whatever you know for for multiple reasons I think folks like just are turned off by the term they're like it's like it means you have to be perfect or you can't there's no discipline or it's permissive parenting and and it's not right but if that's what you think it is then like don't ever say gentle parenting again like you don't have to what I would say and there are tons like conscious parenting connected parenting attachment parenting transformational like it's there's so many right? right but what I what I think is just like throw all of those things out, right? Like we could call it, you know, pee pee poo poo parenting. It doesn't matter. Throw the words out. What I think is so critical to understand is parent, what is going to build our our children and, and help them to just access the most success in life from, you know, success in terms of, you know, their interpersonal relationships, um, academically, you know, relationship with self, um, romantic, you know, partners um, in the future, all of that, right? Um, friendships, what's going to give them the most success is when they have established in a, a secure attachment with at least one caregiver. Mm-hmm. And, you know, attachment theory is, you know, its own like podcast, right? It's like sure. its own. Yeah. Yeah, episode. But it's essentially like the quality of the relationship between parent and child. It's also, you know, quality of relationships between like long term, you know, partners. Um, so if it's if it's a long term relationship, there's there's an attachment, mm-hmm. um, there's an attachment style associated with that. And so when we parent in a way that builds a secure attachment, you know, we are doing things and again, like fan of of um Dr. Dan Siegel, but we're doing things like helping them to feel, we're acting in a way where our kids feel seen, where they feel safe, um, where they feel soothed. Those are, and those are the practices of, of parenting that we sort of employ. 
and we show up for them consistently in that way, right? And so gentle parenting, conscious parenting, whatever it is, it's it's really just parenting in a way that builds a secure attachment. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, you know, attachment theory is just decades of research, right? Like there's no, like, you know, don't come after attachment (laughs) because it's just, it's been researched for, for just years and years. Yeah. Um, Proven, you know, over and over again to be um, what impacts us for a lifetime and what impacts our future relationships and our relationship with ourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love how you said, just like throw them all out the window. Cause I feel like that is to a lot of parents in, in your case, but just in general, like a lot of the work that I do too, I was like, throw it out the window. Like, yes, yeah. it's all this to, like a lot of things. I'm like, it's the same thing, same principle, right? Yeah. Like let's just simplify the concept here and right. throw the buzzwords out the window. I understand maybe the intention to begin with, but then it just, yeah, it blows yeah. up and then it, yeah. it's more confusing than not. In my opinion, that's totally my opinion. Yeah. So, and totally. I, and I think, I think what is maybe lacking for a lot of folks when they think about these sort of like parenting style buzzwords is that it doesn't, often feel authentic Mm -hmm. and like there is no place for like in authenticity right is that a word I don't know there's no but but it is now but there's no place for that right in parenting like if the the authenticity is like I mean it's foundational and going back to you know where we kind of started this conversation with just understanding our past and and bringing that like authentic experience to our consciousness mm-hmm. um you know understanding the authentic nature of our children you know responding in a way that's not like with a script but that is coming from like within mm-hmm. and that feels good and feels and sounds like you like that is the type of parenting you know, that I want to have and that I, that I, you know, coach others to really embody. Mm -hmm. Mic drop. All right, good. No. (laughs) Okay. Last question. And I think you're really going to enjoy this one. This is totally, I started asking, or I'm, I'm going to start asking starting the new year, all my guests, this question is my last question. So put on the spot, but I think you're going to like it because we talked about like being 111 at 111 and like all that awesome stuff. So Final question is, do you think that the decisions that you made bringing you where you are today with parenting on Mars, can you discern when you listened to your heart or your intuition, inner compass versus maybe like your ego or what you thought you should do or what you thought like was maybe expected of you? And how did kind of that shape your path? It is a good question. When I listened to my heart versus like the ego, yeah, honestly, like... I, I would call myself like a recovering perfectionist. (laughs) Um, I started, you know, after I graduated and started pursued a career in, in education and it was very much like, you know, Teach for America has, you know, a, a great reputation. It was really hard to get into, especially at the time when I was applying, Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of prestige in that acceptance and, you know, it sort of became like a safety net, I would say for me for like many, many years. And I I loved my experience there and I learned a lot, but I think the decision to just sort of like go out on my own and let like everyone I know, like, know like, Hey, I'm leaving my job and I'm going to like be a parenthood coach and mm-hmm really publicly kind of navigate all of this, right. With like putting yourself out there on social media and, you know, and getting, you know, getting on, um, you know, talks like this and like really publicly either like succeeding or failing Mm -hmm. (laughs) is like a tough decision to make. But I, I, I just know in my soul that this is what I meant to do. I, I, you know, I love, you know, being home with my kids and having the flexibility in that regard as well. But this was really a decision to be able to work on something that I am just like, so just soulfully passionate about. And, uh, and, and honestly, I think that is going to just change lives, like Mm -hmm. change, you know, the lives of, you know, the parents that I work with, 
um, you know, their families, their future generations, my family too, because like, I'll never stop being a student in this space. And so, yeah, you know, I listened to that, that kind of mom intuition and that kind of, you know, female intuition um, and yeah. Well, kudos. I mean, I just, I feel warm and fuzzy all over like that. That's just, it's so beautiful. Like what you said it, like hitting, stepping into that path of knowing your soul's work, knowing your life's work and knowing it so passionately and so deeply, like there's no doubt in your mind. And that's so beautiful. Like, thank you. Sending you so much love. So, okay, Rachel, what services do you offer? Like, where can people find you? What do you offer? Tell us all about Parenting on Mars. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you can find me at parentingonmars.com. You can also find on Instagram and TikTok at Parenting on Mars. Um, those are those are my socials. But um, what I'm really excited about is the program that I offer for my one-on-one coaching. It's a 90-day program. It's called the Empowered Parent Accelerator. And it's 90 days to or less to like finally parenting with that confidence, with that pride you know, with that, those results and success and change, I know full well what it's like to lay in bed at night and think, oh my gosh, I'm not doing this right. And like, I feel really bad about how I interacted with my kids today, or like, why can't I figure this out? And I need, you know, I'm I'm just kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall and trying to understand my kids' behavior. And it doesn't have to be that way. Like you can, you can parent in a a way that puts you in bed at night feeling like I crushed it. Mm -hmm. Um, And that doesn't mean like, you know, there weren't challenges, but you can face those challenge challenges with so much confidence, so much sturdiness, and it will be felt by your kids as well. Um, You know, I just said something today that um, I think maybe on TikTok, but it was, it was that, you know, our children are going to grow up one day and they're going to make sense of their childhood. They're going to do what we're doing right now. And we're, they're going to reflect back. Mm-hmm. And what isn't going to matter so much is like what they had, the vacations they went on, um, you know, whether or not they got like, you know, a phone at, you know, you know, a certain age or what, whatever. Okay. That might actually matter because there's a lot of research on that. So. Yes. But what I'm saying is like the, the, those types of, um, you know, material things aren't going to be what defines their childhood. What defines Mm -hmm. the story of their childhood is going to be the way that they experienced you as a parent. That is going to be it, Mm -hmm. their experience of you. And that's the type of coaching that I, I guide and I help parents, you know, really achieve is like, the the best way to be experienced by your kids. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. All the love to you. You are doing incredible work. And I am just, thank you so much for spending time with us today and for being. Thank you for having me. You are lovely. I loved this. And um, yeah, just all the good wishes and love your way as well. Thank you. And okay. I, I remember looking at your Instagram. Um, gosh, when we scheduled this and it was right when you posted your video of, um, I think you're cleaning toilets. I think oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the first reel that I watched. And I was like, I like this girl. <laughs> like, yeah. like the, the, the thoughts while you're cleaning everyone else's shit or something like that. And I was just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I love her. <laughs> oh, that's the best. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a, ver- there's a variety of goodies on there. You'll get yeah. you know, the, the um, unfiltered versions too. I love it. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Everything that we discussed, my mamas, they'll be in the show notes below. Thank you for being here with us again today, Rachel. And until next week, as always, simply be you. You have everything inside of you, my mamas, to find your peace, feel in balance, and embrace self-love, trust, and interconnection within your life. We are sending our love and light. Thank you so much for spending this sacred time with me on the Balanced Mom Method podcast. I am sending you so much love and covering you in light, praying this episode has helped you in some way. And if it has, I'd be so grateful if you left a written review sharing how it's impacted your life. It truly lights me up hearing how you are on your way to your breakthrough. And also, please share this episode with another mom who may be struggling. 
to remind her that we are never alone and to help give her that empowerment to take that first step. And be sure to check the show notes for additional ways to connect with me, our motherhood empowerment community, and if and when it feels good to you, learn how we could work together to help you reclaim your power, mama. Thank you. I appreciate all you are and all you do. Sending my love and light.